and welcome to the first episode of Dungeon Defenders Live Quest for Completion. Yep, I am finally, finally got around to it, finally have the time for it, um, at, least for, at least for just one episode, to uh, record Quest for Completion. Um, the series uh, is going to be the same as the Redux one, um, as far as rules go, which is to say, uh, I'm going to be doing everything solo, I'm not going to be keeping any items from before, um, and any progression will be on screen. Uh, this is the exact same account that I used for, uh, what was it, for Redux, um, but I never actually logged on on live, which is why I still had these boxes here. Uh, yeah. So, you know, solo, no keeping items, no playing with other people, and I want to keep every bit of progress on camera. Uh, in Redux, I didn't do any kind of any kind of progression, uh, any any kind of editing, like cutting things at all. Um, I think in this series, I might do a new bit of uh, editing. So one thing that I'm going to be trying out is I want to show off at the very start of the episode before I do anything all these stats on the characters. Um, that way, you know, you guys can see where I am in terms of uh, the progression and whatever, and then you could follow along for whatever builds I'm doing. I'm going to try and do that at the start and maybe end of every episode. And then I will be doing a bit more in terms of uh, cutting in episodes. So last time I was just speeding up uh, any time I was like boring in the episode. This time I probably will just use like straight cuts in the uh, video. Which I was very opposed to before. But uh, yeah. So the route for the first episode, or what I have planned for this first episode, is effectively the same as it was in uh, in Redux. I just want to get to level 74 in the first episode and get ourselves a nice uh, few sets of mythical gear. A few sets, yes. Uh, just get our characters, most of the important ones, to 74 and get the mythical gear uh, just for the moment. After that uh, second episode, I know I want to get a fish, the fish pet from Moonbase. That's it. Um, the, the route, uh, I'm going to explain it very quickly. We're going to do Deeper Well, as we are right now, on Hard Hardcore, then on Insane Hardcore, and then we're going to go ahead and do the entirety of uh, Dread Dungeon on Medium Hardcore, then do Dread Dungeon's first two waves on Insane Hardcore, and then after that, we'll move on to Tinkers, and then, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, the reason I chose EV for this uh, is just because EV is by far the strongest hero starting out. 108 damage per second uh, for each of these beams, and you can stack them up, and uh, it's just like really good damage because it affects a whole, you know, it's an area of effect type thing, to an extent, a little bit. Uh, which means that it's really, really, really powerful for like, you know, when enemies are clustering up like that. And they have a fair enough amount of HP, so they can survive, you know, taking down a whole lot of enemies without uh, needing much maintenance. Doo -doo. And also, they scale really, really well when you upgrade your stats. Um, as you saw, I only put my first point into beam damage, and I'm going to be sticking with that. For a long time, all we're going to be doing is putting our points into beam damage, because, as you see, uh, two more points into beam damage made the, dam made the DPS go from 108 to 177. Uh, next up, next up, yes, uh, next thing that I should talk about. Um, this series, uh, Quest for Completion is what I mean, is not meant for people that are like going through Dungeon Defenders for the very, very first time. If this is your first time playing Dungeon Defenders, uh, don't watch this series and like follow it along as a, as a playthrough because it's, you're not going to get the full experience out of it. Um, I think you're going to be missing out on a lot. But if you don't really care for that, then, you know, who am I to stop you? Uh, this is just a... It's it's not... I don't like calling this series a speedrun, but it's kind of a speedrun series, if I'm going to be honest. Because I'm just going through the game very quickly, um, especially compared to what normal people would be playing, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going through the game very quickly, and it's meant more as a series for uh, people who, to watch, to very quickly, like, you know be able to do whatever they want. So let's say you want to do a certain challenge, um, but you don't know how to do it, 
or all the guides on YouTube are really, really bad because, you know, they're 8K stats and have items that you are nowhere near having. Uh, my idea is that you can pull up the Quest for Completion series and pretty quickly catch up to that, uh, to that point that I'm at and then do the same map. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Just kind of like a, a helper series, if you will. I am... I don't have mana. Oop. Uh, yeah. I, hopefully I do not ramble too much in this first episode. Unlike, uh, <laughs> unlike the extra series for, uh, Closer Completion, I don't... I can't just cut and redo these episodes. <laughs> so if I say something here, it's probably final. Unless I do post-commentary. Which is actually a lot more of an option now. Because I've figured out a way to separate my audio recordings so that it's just my microphone and one thing, and it's just... Alright, uh, this is this is deeper well, and uh, as a result, it's going to be really easy. There's no real build for deeper well, um, at least I don't think so. You really are just going to be placing down whatever, and what, whatever uh, works in whatever place that it works. Uh, I should lower the audio. And just like that, I have lowered the audio and made these beams a little more bearable. If I, t if I put the camera right here, yeah, it's real loud. I apologize for that. That's uh, that's just Dungeon Defenders. I'm sure I was talking about something uh, important before now, but I have completely forgotten. I feel like there's something I should explain here. Some things. I don't know what exactly. So I'll just go off the top of my head and see uh, what I get to. The first thing, probably, as far as gear, you're looking for any gear that gives you good stats for tower damage mainly. right? If, some, if a piece of gear has high tower damage, or any tower damage, or uh, beam damage, I guess, um, pick it up and use it whenever you can. That's like a big thing. After that, uh, you want to look for uh, damage rate, maybe beam health, and then um, hero speed or casting rate. I think casting rate is more important than speed. Uh, and then hero damage. But if it has hero HP, ability 1 or ability 2, or um, range slash shock time, that is not a piece of gear that is worth your time. It is garbage. Um, at least from my experience. I don't know, maybe you guys have different experiences. Uh, that's as far as, like, just item stats go. Um, as far as weapons go, you're looking for a weapon that is very cheap to upgrade. As in, like, uh, 57 is pretty low, but, like, 39 has a fair amount of upgrades. And uh, that's kind of it. Because you're going to be wanting to upgrade the weapon and make it not good, because you can't... I don't know, I don't think you're going to get a weapon that's good. But you're going to be trying to get your weapon to be, like, you know, mediocre. Uh, since right after um, right after Deep Well, we're going to be going to Dread Dungeon. Uh, thankfully, because EV is so powerful, you don't really need a super powerful weapon to be able to do Dread Dungeon on medium. Uh, you do need something that does at least, like, 100 damage per shot and shoots semi-quickly. But uh, that's a pretty low bar. I think, at least. Originally, uh, the plan that I had set out was like a, a lot more convoluted, a lot more steps involved. But I found through I've genuinely like for this first episode, I've tested the uh, the route that I have in mind, maybe six times, right? And that's like six times of uh, an hour, maybe two hour long session of uh, just testing random things out to see what works. Uh, yeah, so the new route that we're going to be seeing right now very very cool very very cool very very good uh, it will take longer though than um, than redux if you remember on the redux series the first episode started out with about uh, I want to say 15 I think 15 minutes of just me running around pirate invasion picking up whatever loot and hoping to get uh, high quality loot uh, I don't want to use anything like pirate invasion in this series um, because I feel like pirate invasion it is something that is very likely to get patched, and therefore people in the future won't be able to use it. So you'll have to like have a completely different start. Whereas like right now, 
as long as I don't use anything that like that's like a very major bug, um, you guys should be able to just follow along very easily, even if you know the game gets updated, uh, which it will be, which it will be getting updated. Uh, that's the whole reason why I decided to do this series on um, live instead of Redux, because uh, Redux is not going to be getting any more updates, as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware at least. But live will be getting many more updates in the future. Uh, this is a pretty okay piece of gear. Um, EV. Oh, I don't know how how beginner I want to have the series. EV can have two weapons. So ideally you're going to have one weapon that's like big damage dealer. And then you're going to have another weapon that's just like a stat stick, basically. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, looks like we got pretty garbage rewards for the first time going through here. Not surprising. I just want to check out the upgrade cost of these items. 39 is very good. In fact, I may use that now. Um, maybe. Let me check. This is the other thing we have 39? Okay, so the upgrade cost of an item is fairly dependent on its projectile speed. And that's like the main thing that I look for. Uh, because I have found that projectile speed tends to be a big factor for some reason or another as to how much an, up an item costs to upgrade. So, if your item has like a high cost to upgrade to begin with, it's probably not going to be worth upgrading, at least really, really early on. This does not stay true at all for like later on in the game. Uh, like when you're, you know, doing mythicals and stuff like that, you don't really have to care about that kind of a thing. But um, when you're early on, like I am, uh, and you're just trying to get like a mediocre weapon, mana is not super, super available. So you got to kind of conserve it however you can. Words. I never gave an exact number for how long uh, it'll take to get to 74. Um, I can say that if you do everything properly, you can get into Tinkers at probably an hour and 10 minutes, maybe just an hour of, uh, of gameplay. Um, and that's kind of excluding like the time that you spend looking at gear or uh, leveling up gear, stuff like that. You know, the in-between boring sections. Um, in my last attempt and or uh, trial, I guess, it took me an hour and 20 minutes to get uh, Tinkers and get the first wave completed. So I'm thinking as long as we're there around that time for this recording, all things will go well. Generally, generally what I've found is that uh, if I just don't mess with the settings like at all, pretty much, uh, OBS will do very well. Uh, as far as audio goes. I was really trying to get uh, audio settings very similar to uh, Discord, because Discord audio, oh my lord, Discord is so good with its audio. Negative uh, range we don't care about. But I, I couldn't figure it out, you know, I didn't find the, the secret trick to uh, get audio settings to be as good as they are in Discord. So this is what we have. Um, I also, in case uh, in case you guys haven't noticed, I have swapped back to the old microphone. Yeah, uh, I have a headset mic right now that I'm using, and I have a like standalone desk mic that I was using for uh, recordings, like for the most recent um, extras episode. But I found that the standalone mic, unless I'm standing like, not standing, unless I'm, unless I have my face right right next to it, um, and it's very uncomfortable for me. It is not very good for just any, you know, run-of-the-mill recordings. It makes my voice sound like it's in a cave, pretty much. I don't know how to describe it very well, but that's that's what happens. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, personally. So that's why I, uh, I don't use it. Or I'm not going to be using it. I might use it for something like a voiceover, though. Uh, for two reasons. The first reason being because um, it's very discernible like the difference between the microphones so I won't have to say like hey this is a voiceover um, it'll be pretty noticeable that I'm using that microphone uh, and that you know there is a voiceover going on and also because uh, it does sound better if I go through the effort of like you know standing right next to it having my face right there and all that Ooh. Um, honestly I might just speed up this part of the video. In fact, I will, because I don't. Th I, unless I have something important to say, in which case I will make a very loud noise <laughs> uh, for 
uh, editing Ian to be able to hear. Uh, I, I, ugh, I'm just going to skip. Yeah. So I'm going to just speed up this probably like four times, and I'll see you guys whenever there's an important piece of gear or I have something to say. One thing that I've um, I've realized and or not really realized, but I do want a little bit of input on this. So as a game, right, Dungeon Defenders, your, your loot is just going to be kind of random, right? So in theory, you guys could be following along with what I'm doing and get literally no rewards. Like you could genuinely get nothing um, if you are just <laughs> that unlucky. Like you could definitely follow along the series... Uh, and, you know, do the things at the very start, like I am right now, where your items don't really matter. But the moment that, like, you know, stats and stuff like that matter, you guys might not be able to follow along. Uh, and that's, like, a big concern I have. And if you have an idea for, like, a solution towards that, then please do tell. Um, because I don't really know exactly what to do. My current working idea for that problem is uh, pretty simple. As long as I keep the uh, the actions or whatever we're doing in the video very simple and easy to follow, um, and as long as I make it like very like replicatable, yes, words. Uh, basically, as long as whatever I'm doing is something that you guys can follow along with very easily, um, you should be able to just kind of repeat the most recent uh, step in terms of progress until you're able to catch up to what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I don't want to be doing any kind of cuts uh, in terms of like, you know, I come back, like, you know, I cut the video and all of a sudden I'm back with like full transcendent gear from Mythical. Uh, I don't think I want to do that, um, but I know that I'm going to need to do some kind of like, you know, something like that uh, in the editing process. I just don't know what exactly is the, uh, the best solution for that. Wow, that is a lot of cast rate. Speaking of very good loot, um, I think uh, one idea that I have in mind right now is that as long as I keep the the stats as the primary thing, right? Like, as long as I make sure that, oh yeah, to complete, like, I don't know, medium hardcore uh, Dread Dungeon, you need X stat here and Y stat here, blah, blah, blah. Um, you guys should be able to follow along because uh, my running theory is that if I was able to get you know, those items and those stats uh, following what I did, you guys should be able to do the same thing by just, you know, following along and having to repeat a step if you need to. I think this gun is going to be better to upgrade than this one because it's just got a much fire, higher, fast, higher, faster firing rate. Yes. Uh, this is a very boring part, so I'm going to try and go through this as quick as I can, because there's not much going on. So that is uh, the first uh, the first wave, the first, yes, no, the first um, completion of Deeper Well on Insane Hardcore, which means that we can now go into Dread Dungeon on ideally medium. I don't think we should have to do this on easy. I've never had to do this on easy. Um, the main thing that you're going to be worried about uh, for Dread Dungeon is the Wyverns. Um, at least on medium, it's just going to be the Wyverns. The enemies here don't really have that much health. Like, the Orcs will have maybe 2,200 HP. Uh, and that's a very small amount of HP, all things considered. But uh, the Wyverns will have like 1,000-something. And since uh, for half the Wyverns, you have to rely on player DPS, um, they're going to be a little more difficult to deal with. Uh, than the regular enemies will. Uh, the builds for Dread Dungeon. This, I have never really watched anybody else do Dread Dungeon, so I can fully claim that whatever build I'm going to show you guys is just one that I made myself, right? 
Um, and I have actually made some big, big improvements to this build, which is, as far as I'm aware, the only reason that I'm able to complete this map on medium, rather than having to like you know go through a whole bunch of extra steps, uh, is because I have I have a little revelation that I've uh, had. Yes, I, I had a little revelation about how ogres work, which uh, is allowed is has allowed me to finish this map. There's a lot of words, not a lot of meaning, as I've realized. But uh, you can just follow along with what I'm doing. For the first wave, just place everything as I have. Um, up here, if you need to, you can DPS down some of these archers, but it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, once a few things up here are dead, build another secondary proton beam. If Again, if you need to, uh, shoot this orc here, uh, whichever one of these, a little bit extra to like, get him staggered and stay on the beam a bit longer, but that shouldn't be a problem. And then as far as everywhere else goes, as long as you've placed these beams uh, roughly as I have, um, you guys should be perfectly fine. Oh, and one thing for the very first wave that I should mention that I did not before, make sure you place this proton beam down here, just like going as far that way as you can, because what will happen is that a orc or two, um, maybe more than that, will just start doing loop-de-loop -loop circles around this spot right here, uh, which is like, it's funny and great, right? But it means that the wave is going to take forever to finish because at the moment you kind of don't have a lot of DPS, you know? Um, no, player DPS. The, uh, the shock beams, however, much stronger. Uh, whenever you can, um, for the first wave, you can sell those beams there and put them back down here. Uh, a general rule of thumb for placing these ground beams is more towards the center is probably better. Uh, at least from what I've found. More enemies like to go towards like the very center path that, uh, that they can, the most center path that they can, instead of like a, uh, I don't know, all along the, like, the left side or the right side. So like that's why I'm not placing any beams on the right side here. Although if you wanted, you could have a beam going from here and have it go like a little diagonally, um, and that would work just well as well. Just, just well, just fine as well. Um, for wave two, you're going to be placing a few physical walls, and uh, this is where the spiciness comes in. If you place these physical beams up high like this, instead of on the ground, uh, what'll happen is that the ogres, in their infinite wisdom, will just run up to the to the walls and do nothing. They they will just die. Um, and that is why this build is so beautiful. Because if an ogre comes from... That's fire damage. If an ogre comes from uh, this area that I'm at right now... Uh, two to you, please. Or uh, the other area over there, you don't have to care about them at all. Um, if they come from the bottom area, you'll probably have to deal with the ogres, but uh, another nice thing about this build is that even if they do come from that lower area, that's a lot of cast rate, holy hell. Uh, what'll happen a lot is that the ogres will just start doing spinny spinny spins uh, over and over and over again for absolutely no reason, and that'll just get them killed like automatically, so you won't have to deal with them. Um, or it won't get them killed, but it'll just give you a lot more time to deal with them. Uh, now, on the first wave, there's only one ogre, so it's not that much of a problem. But on future waves, you get two, three, and then eventually four ogres. But again, most of the ogres should be going to this path or that path over there, which means that you won't have to deal with them. Um, another thing, uh, another another beauty, beauty, yes, another really nice thing about the uh, setup that I have here is that if an ogre comes from over here or over there, they're screwed. But also, specifically for this area, if you build a 3DU proton beam, if a archer, not archer, if a um, wyvern comes from over here, they will swoop down, focus this physical beam, and as they're swooping down, they will get hit and eventually killed by this proton beam, which means that you only have to deal with the wyverns coming from that direction, uh, which, believe me, is a massive, massive help. Uh, now, we have a little bit of DU left over. I always like to spend that DU on um, just this area down here, because what will happen is that this uh, physical beam here, this will just get like battered like crazy by uh, mages and archers. So having these beams right here and the beams over down there, the extras, and then the 4DU and 2DU beam over there, um, they'll just deal with any long-range enemies that will be causing you any problems. That might be causing you any problems. 
Um, I might keep this whole Dread Dungeon section unedited. Uh, I might not. Uh, by un unedited, I mean like I might not have any skips or uh, speed ups. Or actually, maybe I will. I don't know. If it gets boring, like if recording, uh, if editing Ian thinks it's boring, then we'll probably be editing. But I don't plan on it at the moment. All right. Um, so first wave ogre. If he comes from up here or over there, you don't care about it. But at the start of the wave, you got to be right here and make sure that these uh, wyverns coming from this path, these two wyverns, make sure that they die. That's why you need the kind of an okay weapon to be able to deal with it. Um, now that's beautiful right there. The uh, ogre is coming from up here, which means that he's just going to get stuck on this wall. And we don't even have to look in that direction anymore. Uh, wyvern down here. Um, hitting the wall a whole bunch, very fun, but eventually he'll swoop down, just as he did now, and get killed by the, uh, the beam. Something I should mention. Uh, these walls don't matter at all, uh, I guess not, not including this one, for the regular enemies. Um, genuinely, you could just not have these walls and there wouldn't be much of a difference, because these regular enemies will just be killed by the, by the proton beams on the ground. Um, if you want, you can jump over here and kind of give these uh, archers a bit of a shove into the um, proton beam so they die a bit quicker. That way they're not spending like a millennia being jackasses and shooting your walls. Alternatively, you could just place your beams a little bit better. But that's kind of hard. And it's easier to just kind of shoot at them. Um, alternatively, you have a high enough damage weapon, you can just kill them. Um, I sort of do. It takes a while, but I can sort of do that as well. Uh, orcs, same situation, just gotta kind of bait them. Now, if an ogre had come from down here, this is your strategy. Uh, make sure this uh, physical beam is fully repaired, and then instead of, uh, if you can, of course, just keep repairing this physical beam from like, like this distance where you're safe from the ogre. Um, but if you can't, uh, if, you're, if your repair speed isn't fast enough, what you can do is just, when it's about to get low, you upgrade the beam, and that'll refill, refill its health completely. Um, other than that, uh, don't upgrade any of the... Don't upgrade this wall over here at all. And, um... That you should be fine. Right? Just don't upgrade this wall, because uh, you need to be able to, like, sit there... You need, you need to be able to upgrade it if uh, the time comes to, like, you know, prevent an ogre from getting through. Uh, although on medium... Funnily enough, on medium, the ogres really are not a problem. Uh, they'll just kind of die, or they'll get very close to dying when they get through these beams. Even if both the ogres right now come from this bottom path, um, what you can do is just bait the ogres to follow you, sell this physical beam up here, and then just get them to follow you through this path and die, or place a decoy, um, a whole bunch of options really, and any of them will work. Just basically bait the ogres into chasing you. And eventually they'll just die on their own. Uh, tower health, lovely. So one thing I should mention is that on Insane, the Ogres have 500 something thousand HP. And the regular enemies, fair amount more. But the main thing is that the Wyverns, they will have, I think it's 18, 12,000? Bare minimum 12,000 HP to start out with. Which is not great. Uh, wow, that's amazing. We are getting some really, really nice uh, items. Uh, I'll keep it tower HP for now. That's going to cost a build an upgrade. Um, ideally, before the end of, or at least by the end of this uh, farming session, yes, by the end of the medium hardcore dread dungeon, you will have loot that is good enough to be able to do um, insane hardcore dread dungeons at least first wave, ideally the first two waves. Okay, second wave, same thing as the first wave. Um, you should definitely have upgraded your weapon. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, make sure you shoot down the wyverns. This is going to take a little bit longer because this one is fire immune. Hence why we actually care about uh, elemental damage. Um, if you want, you could actually place down a decoy to get these wyverns to focus on it. Uh, don't hit me, don't hit me. Make sure you don't get hit by the enemies at all. Uh, ogre has come, two ogres have come from down here, which means that you want to be sitting um, over here and repairing this physical beam for a whole long, 
a long time. Uh, but, beautiful, you love to see it. The ogres are also just doing loop-de-loops, uh, like the orcs were from earlier. So you kind of don't have to care about them. Wyvern is taking too long to die, so you can just repair this physical beam. The ogre over here has gone up to the wall, which means that he's a problem that must be dealt with. Both ogres, in fact. I have the, um, up the rate, yes. I have the ability to repair and upgrade really fast, to be able to have, uh, to... You may not have been able to do what I was able to do just now. And if that's the case, you'll just have to bait both of these ogres. Um, one thing you could do is place down a decoy here. Uh, actually, that's a bad idea. You should just do what I said earlier and get them to follow you up until this wall. And then place down a decoy right here for them to focus down. Um, the ogres have enough damage to heal, to heal you, to kill you in one hit. So keep that in mind. Uh, that is kind of important. Uh, level 34, that's a lot of tower damage. Uh, physical beam went down, uh, down over there, that's fine. Looks like one of the mages over here is being a jackass. I guess you could um, and might want to place these uh, beams a little bit more to the left, one of them at least, than I did on second thought. But there you go, that's the uh, third wave. And every wave after this will be effectively the same. Um, if you have upgraded this physical wall down here, just sell it and then replace it. Um, and any extra mana just spend on upgrading these uh, proton beams. They are very important. And if you have enough stats for like tower damage, the ogres will die really, really, really quickly. I'm tempted to equip that. Um, cast rate is very useful. It's not super important, but it's super useful, I have found. Wow, we are getting some really nice pieces of gear. Um, but even without super high cast rate, you should be able to just follow along and do whatever I'm doing um, pretty easily, I think. I don't think it should be very difficult at all. Uh, the chests, I should mention, the chests probably won't give any good loot. From my experience, at least, the chests are just really garbage, uh, loot-wise. And you can kind of ignore them. Um, it'll vary from person to person, of course. So, you might have some really good loot on the chests. Who knows? It is a game of RNG at the end of the day. Uh, suck. Suck. Great. Uh, now I should really be upgrading our weapon a little bit. Or maybe looking for a better weapon. Um, by the start of this wave, yes. Um, when, when all the items get sold, um, when we start the next wave, we will get a lot of mana. Um... Not really a lot, but for our like for where we are in progression, we're gonna get a whole bunch of mana. Uh, this this might be worth using. If you're not me, well, that that's weird. If 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 you are in the same position right now, you should probably pick this up and use it and upgrade the tower damage like twice. Um, I'm gonna be a little stingy and not do that though. Okay, that staff might be very very good. Um, I think that staff has the potential of being very powerful. This one has a very high projectile speed, so I doubt it's going to be useful. Um, if I haven't mentioned it already... I wonder if I have. If I haven't mentioned it already... Uh, godly items? Complete garbage. Uh, very, very, very unlikely that you will find any useful godly items. At least for a, for a good while. Um, maybe later on you might find something useful, but... Odds that you get a useful godly item for the moment are very, very low. Uh, let's see. That's going to cost a whole lot of mana to upgrade. What is the upgrade cost of this? 158. Okay. This has multiple projectiles, and it has a high base starting damage, which means that this has replaced our previous weapon. Um, same thing as before, but the wyverns are going to be coming out in very weird intervals. And also, uh, the ogres will both... The ogres might both come out at once, so keep that in mind. As you can see, the staff is very solid. I want to pick this up. I will equip this mid-wave. Not the smartest move, but it's a move. Um, on Insane for the... Sa Ooh, give me that. I want that really badly. Which one was it? This thing? Uh, give. Give. 
We lost a little bit of tower HP, which does suck. But we gained a lot in terms of... Are they both down here again? They are. Would you look at that? Alright, since they're both down here... Um, oh, I got hit. That's minus XP. If you don't get hit, it's really good because you gain... You don't lose a 1.3 times XP bonus that you normally have. But since we've already gotten hit, I can afford to just kind of ignore it and get hit even more. If the wall goes down, place another one very quickly if you can. Um, yes, words. This wall over here is going to go down eventually, but it's more important to make sure that the enemies don't hit the crystal first so that we don't lose that uh, nice big XP bonus. Is that it? Yeah, okay, that's it for now. Um, if you want, if all the wyverns are dead, you can actually just kind of sell this and it'll speed up the process of the enemies going through here a lot. As long as there's no ogre, of course. If there's, if there's an ogre, don't, don't sell that. How's about you guys stop that? Uh, if you want, you can definitely move these uh, beams a little bit. As you can see, my placement for them is not ideal. I got hit again. God damn it. Uh, getting hit multiple times doesn't really matter. The moment you're hit once, uh, your XP bonus is gone. All right, I'm going to put this wall over here back up. And uh, reinitiate. Re -initiate? Yes. Re-begin? Re re no. Initiate the boring phase of... Uh, looking through gear to determine what is useful and what is not. Uh, this... How much tower HP do we have? 13? Okay. If you don't have as much tower HP as I have right now, um, you shouldn't pick that item up. But I'm fortunate and I have the tower HP to spare. I want to keep at least 10-ish tower HP. Um, for the upcoming waves, just because uh, it's very nice to have that kind of cushion for failure. This I could not pick up without royally messing up our tower HP. Okay, now maybe I could. <laughs> oh wait, is this a godly? Wait, no, that's not. I, I was looking at this thing. Okay. Once again, re repeat this to yourself as much as you need to. Godly gear is worthless gear truly a waste of time. Uh, I have nothing to say, so I'm going to speed up uh, the video, and um, I'll, I guess you guys can kind of see what I'm picking up. Maybe maybe I'll, maybe I'll slow down the video every time I pick an item up. Um, I think I will equip this. Yes. Gives us a lot more tower HP. You really care about your tower stats the most. Um, not to say that your player stats aren't super important, but the tower stats are way more important. Uh, I didn't mention this before. Definitely should have. Your goal for leaving Dread Dungeon, just as a map in general, is if you have 200 tower HP, or no, tower damage, and about 50, hopefully more, tower HP, uh, you can just go straight into um, Pirate Invasion? No, you can go straight into Tinkers and do that on Insane, not Insane, uh, Nightmare Hardcore, just do the first wave of it. Uh, there are three ogres this wave, and then the next wave there'll be four. Uh, so far, all of the ogres have come from the bottom area, which has sucked. That's a lot of ogre spawn noises. Um, looks like this time we got a little bit luckier. Only one of the ogres came from the bottom area. How's about you move towards that beam, huh? Alright. So, that ogre over there. Can completely ignore him, he's just gonna die. Two of the ogres came from this path. That you love to see it. That means that we don't have to care about this path at all. Uh, we don't have to care about those two ogres at all. Great. Um, looks like this wall is actually doing pretty fine. So I suppose the uh, the physical beam, no, the proton beam placements for the extra things down here does actually matter quite a bit. As you see, as you see, yes, as you've seen, the ogres. Now that we have such high stats, um, 
they'll just kind of die on their own. Like that one didn't even reach the wall before it died. And this one right here, super stuck. Uh, this is actually a super powerful area in terms of your um, your physical barrier. No, your uh, DPS. Because there are four beams here with which you can annihilate the ogres. Whereas in most other areas there are only three. Or two if you're unlucky. I think I'm going to move that beam that's to the far right a little bit over to the left. Yeah, I'll do that. Because uh, that seems to be a major problem. I think this will be fine. Mm, hold on. I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of extra work here. Okay, that should be good. Uh, again, don't upgrade this physical beam unless it's in the middle of the wave. Four ogres, as stated prior. And now the items should be pretty good. Ideally, you'll get an item that deals like a thousand damage per shot or something um, from doing this. Or at least from the final wave. Uh, that is very important for being able to do the next uh, level difficulty of Dread Dungeon. Mind you, just the first uh, little bit of the next level of difficulty. You don't have to do like, you know, um, you don't have to do the whole thing, but you do have to get the little starting area done. Is this better than what we currently have? Debatably, yes. Wait, what are the other stats it gives? Casting rate, minus speed, we already have low speed. Uh, I think I'm going to equip that. We lose a little bit of tower damage, but we get a bunch more tower HP and some other side stats. All right. So, I didn't really find any super good items, weapon-wise. Um, you want to look for something that has high tower damage, not tower damage, high base damage, when you're getting one of these weapons. Uh, this is going to cost a lot to upgrade. What this? 421. If I can get this to be a bit better... No, I don't think this is going to be better, even with all of its upgrades. Okay, so this is probably the best weapon we're going to have. This kind of sucks, but um, I suppose we'll just stick with this. Uh, funnily enough, if we get the 200,000 mana from the next two waves, which we definitely should, we'll have five additional projectiles, which will mean that uh, this arc that it has, there will be two shots in the very middle, which will be nice for getting, getting a bit of extra damage. I suppose you could have more hero damage as well. Okay, so this is what I decided to keep. Um, in another level, another in another wave, um, we would have already had it had I not uh, messed up earlier and gotten hit. But the next wave, um, we're going to hit level 27, which means we can equip this helmet, and then we'll have this other chest piece, and then basically like a lot of this gear. And then after the end of the, the map, yes, after doing this on Insane, um, the first two waves, we will be able to equip the other... Uh, level 34 pieces of gear that are pretty much just direct upgrades. I think this weapon will be... No, yeah, okay, okay, okay. This weapon will be way, way more than good enough. Uh, I would like to stop the problems here earlier rather than later. There we go. Uh, ogre from down below. That kind of sucks. Two ogres from down below. Doubly sucks. They have more health now than they did before. I think, actually. Uh, maybe that's the same. I think it's the same. So I suppose that's not much, as much of a problem as I was making it out to be. Uh, three ogres from down below. This is like a nightmare scenario. This is where we are happy. Very, very happy for the fact that we have... Uh, last cast rate. Also high damage, actually. I think at this point it doesn't even matter because... Even if they go up there, yeah, he's not going to be able to break that. No shot. Okay, we're good. And once again, this one over here is just being a big dingus and dying on his own. You love to see it. Well, 
Um, once we get the last few wyverns here, that'll be the end of the uh, the map, more or less. Sadly, you don't get anything big in terms of um, rewards. Like, you're not going to get a uh, super nice weapon or armor. You're going to get an accessory, and more, more likely than not, it's going to be really bad. How's about you dying your way up here, Chief? Don't hit me, don't hit me. Alright, there we go. We got an accessory truck? <laughs> that is the first time I have ever seen that happen. In many, many goes at this. That's the first time I've ever seen us get an accessory. That little mask you see on the map? That is an accessory. Interesting. Something I've realized is that you guys can't tell what I'm looking at very well. <laughs> Uh, like, when I'm looking at the map, you guys can't tell that I'm looking at the map. Probably just looks a little weird for you guys. I apologize. Can't, I don't know if I can do anything about that. Side note, this area up here, these these beams really are just for the ogre. Like, these, these two beams right here, they deal with like 90% of the enemies that come through. Which is kind of crazy. Okay, uh, let's get the last few archers dead. We deal a lot of damage. Uh, won't be that much damage considering what we're going to have to deal with in the, in the insane difficulty, but um, still definitely a lot of damage. There we go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So on medium, we got a fairly large amount of XP. Uh, 200 something thousand. 200, 320, yes, 330,000 XP for doing the whole thing on medium, which is a pretty good amount. On Insane, we will get that same amount. Uh, even more than that, actually. Oh, I, I don't like that it ha doesn't have cast rate, but all these other stats make me happy. Um, on Insane, it'll be a pretty large difference. Like, on in once we get to the Insane difficulty, they'll, uh, we'll get 230,000 on the first wave. Uh, this sucks, because it has... Uh, I'm going to keep it, but I, think it's, I don't think it's good. Um, let's level let's level up our character. I have already leveled up a character. Lovely. Um, equip this helmet, which is a direct upgrade. Equip this chest piece. And these gloves. I was going to equip those gloves, but they are no longer uh, a lot better. So lock all, unlock all, and then just lock the things we want to keep. And now that we've equipped the new items, we can look through all these other things on the ground. Uh, it's going to be boring, so I'm going to speed up until I pick up an item or something. Alright, well this is just a pretty direct upgrade from what we already have, I think. That is a nice secondary, and I think there's just one more area of items to look at. Oh wait, there's an accessory here. Oh, that's actually decent. Do not expect to get an accessory. Those things are rare as hell. So now we should have enough um, XP, no, ex enough mana to upgrade this to its max level. Five projectiles, ba -boom -ba. Look at this. Two shots. Um, that'll be very nice. Also, this has a Kai... No, it doesn't. It has a regular cast rate. Crazy. Um, from These are the items that I've picked up. Sell this one. Uh, looks like I picked up nothing, actually. <laughs> looks like I didn't actually pick up any items. Oh, well. Um... We're actually, I think theoretically, you could just go into uh, Tinker's Lab with these stats. All right, that's the mana. You don't actually have to do what I just did there with the crystal. Um, you can instead just, uh, you can just, you know, return to the tavern. It'll pick up all the mana for you. Uh, if you're wondering, these pets, not worth it. Do not look at them. These armors, they might be. Same with the weapons. But the pets, very much not so. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. To the people of the future, of the past, I am I am from the future. Um, right after you get level 25, equip the pyro or the engineer, one of the two, from your tavern. And if you can, the this weapon here, uh, if it's better than whatever you have at the moment, uh, it will be very useful for you. Okay, interlude finished.
Uh, let's see. Wait, hold on. I saw one of these items. Weapons. How much better is this? It is sort of better. This weapon is sort of better here. Um, will I pick it up? It's not sort of better. It's just kind of... It's like plus one everywhere. <laughs> then minus one HP. Uh, it's a little too expensive for me. I'm, I'm going to be a bit cheap. Um, so, here's an interesting thing about EV. Her uh, beams, the attack rate matters a lot less than you think. So, we're doing 3307 damage per second. And if I equip these uh, bracer things, even though they give negative 10 um, rate, they give, what was it, 6 damage? So, we've gone down in damage a little bit, but we have gained from it um, more HP. And, uh, oh, sorry about that, jeez. And, um, hero damage, movement speed. Okay, um, let's move into Dread Dungeon, insane. First two waves. If we, if you can, if you get lucky, to be honest, um, you could even do the third wave of this. Uh, I don't think I will be able to, though. Uh, make sure you have the right weapon in your primary. So this is the damage that we're dealing, um, and this is the damage we're more likely dealing to the wyverns, which should be enough. I really do think that it is pretty easy to get a weapon that is good enough to be able to do Dread Dungeons, um, to deal with the Dread Dungeons Wyverns, but uh, if you have if you have difficulties, then uh, L, I guess. I don't know. You might have more uh, of a problem if you don't know exactly what to look for. Um, I used to think in the past that a Apprentice weapon was a lot better than any other weapon you'd get here. Um, than a, uh, a Huntress weapon, but I have, I'm backpedaling on that a little bit, because I have found more and more that uh, that isn't really the case. Um, kind of, it really is on a item by item basis that you have to judge these things, which sucks because it requires a lot more brain power and is more difficult to explain. We are one minute and two seconds. One minute? Yes, we are one hour and two seconds at the recording. I would really like to get to the, uh, what is it? I would really like to get to the Tinker's Lab point soon. Um, first wave, by the way, press O to hide or show the enemy counts here. And I think N or no, U, P, ah, P to hide the towers. Um, first wave, stand up here. As you can see, the archers have double the health. Pretty much everything has double the health, to be honest. Except for the uh, orcs and wyverns, they have way more than double. Look at that beefy boy. 1,300. 1,300, I mean. He will not die by a single beam. So you'll have to place two beams here. Maybe even a wall, honestly. And if you're not confident in your DPS, you can preemptively shoot some shots in, a, in some directions to uh, try and make sure that these uh, orcs die. Um, same thing as before on the first wave. Place down a proton beam like that. Uh, it'll be very helpful for dealing with the stupid circly circly orcs. If you can, make sure you don't get hit by doing it. For this first wave, uh, do your best to not get hit by anything at all. It is very important that that happens. Uh, be careful of this top area. Very commonly orcs will get through here, but you should have a good enough weapon to deal with them if they do. And that is pretty much it for the first wave. Um, I'll be honest, even the second wave, Okay, they got through these beams, which I didn't expect. They must have taken a weird path. Even the second wave is going to be a little bit difficult to get past. Uh, if I'm being entirely honest. I think this would be good enough. These proton beams uh, are not going to be exclusively for the uh, ogres now. They will also be here for the orcs. And uh, mages, maybe. Since uh, everything has so much more health now. This will be for to you. Tower HP is a lot more important now than it was before, if I haven't already mentioned that. Um, the loot that you're going to get from these chests, it's going to be really garbage still. <laughs> it's going to be really bad. Um, we have leveled up, which means that I should not place any more towers for a second, because I think some of the other items we were ready to equip uh, are going to give us a substantial increase in our tower HP. So it's better to place down the towers after we have that increase. Doop, doop. Uh, yes, very substantial. Equip this. 
How much of a difference is this? You should not spend as much time as I am looking at these. And equip this one. Yes. Um, 200. Oh, we're actually ready. We're all we're already ready for tinkers now. Very interesting. Um, the wave two should be possible, um, even if the ogre isn't isn't in the right spot. Wave three, maybe less so, maybe a little less true. Wave three might be a bit harder. I am placing down these beams uh, differently from what I did before. I am testing out something new, which I really shouldn't be doing in the middle of these episodes. But uh, you can't stop me. Right, let's pick up this chest. No useful items, great. Okay, um, you should definitely be upgrading these beams over here. I didn't do that, uh, stupid. And as you can see, wyverns, they have 12,000 health now. At this point, if you get hit by anything, you will very likely die. Ogre came from up top, that's great. Means we won't have to deal with the ogre being in jackass. Uh, wyverns up here have so much more health that you will probably have to deal with them yourself. The predictive uh, firing that Dungeon Defenders has with its weapons really does come back to bite you in the ass right now. Um, also, the loot that you get from enemy drops is the main thing that you're going to be getting here. I nearly got killed. That would have sucked. I think that ogre up there is actually getting healed like crazy by the mages below him. But those mages are going to die in a moment anyways. And think this wall is actually becoming a useful wall now because... Uh, we just don't have the health to survive anything. I don't know what this ogre is after, by the way. I don't know what he's pissed off about. But either way, it is good for us. While the ogre is still alive, which he will be for a fat second, make sure to look through all these items and make sure there's nothing that you want to pick up. Because... Uh, the timer that you have now is very noticeable. Um, it's a lot easier to do this when you don't have a clicking, clicking, ticking talk in the top left that says waves ne next wave is going to start. Next wave, I'll be honest here guys, probably won't be able to complete. I have not been able to complete the next uh, wave in a good few attempts. That is because the Dark Elf Warriors have a bajillion HP. And what happens every single time is that they get straight past my defenses and then just kill me because they have a billion damage. To be entirely honest, you should probably just quit right now instead of trying to do the third wave. But uh, I'm not going to do that. And that's the Ogre Dead. Oh yeah, a lot of, a lot of XP if I haven't mentioned already. Um, we're at a good enough point in both... HP and damage, but um, if you're not, uh, HP takes doesn't take priority, damage takes priority, so upgrade your damage and then focus on your HP. And the Dark Elf Warriors have spawned. This sucks, by the way. In case you guys haven't figured it out, this sucks so far. Oh, I'm dead, okay. Just like every other attempt that I have had at a... <laughs> every other attempt that I have had at this, doing the third wave of Dread Dungeon has proved impossible. But we have the required uh, tower stats. Uh, I would like to get a little bit more in terms of beam rate, actually. If you have super low rate, the rate and damage are somewhat equal importance for upgrading. But uh, as long as you have 200 here, 50 here, you don't need any rate. Um, you can get through Tinker's Lab. Okay, let's get into it. Tinker's Lab, uh, Nightmare Hardcore. Um, for now, for the moment, we're just going to do this with one player. Just one. Because doing it with any more players, I would like to see my screen better. Uh, possible, perfectly possible. Well, I, but I don't think I will do it. Uh, just because I'm not comfortable with that yet. 
Now, the original Redux build, you use shock beams throughout this entire area, but uh, shock beams are hot garbage in, um, in live, and the proton beams are way better. And that's not just because the proton beams cost less and they can be much longer, it is simply just more DPS by a lot. So like, if I were placed down a shock beam, the DU cost doesn't matter, by the way. It'll just change how much HP it has. 4,100 compared to 8,000, more than that. 8,000 uh, something, something, something. Basically double the damage from the proton beams compared to the shock beams. Physical beam here. Uh, and of note, because you are using proton beams and you are saving 15 mana every single time you place a proton over a shock beam, uh, that does mean that you have enough mana to put in a safe measure for a little spot that I'll show you guys in the future. In the future, in a little bit. Doop. Something like that, there we go. I'm not used to being able to make these beams uh, so long. Uh, down here, you might actually want to put down one shock beam. Um, that's simply because there's not enough uh, range for your proton beam to be able to uh, go and use all of its DU. So like this shock beam right here, something like that's fine. And then just pr place down another proton beam that's like super long like that. And there we go. That should be that bottom area dealt with, I think. Um, frankly speaking, even if you get your crystal hit on your first go and or attempt through this, it doesn't matter that much. As long as you make it through uh, the first wave, you're still going to get a whole bunch of XP. Even if you get hit, you'll probably get like a million XP. Which is a lot, a lot of XP. Uh, not shock, proton. Do -do -do. Uh, you can either roughly or directly follow. Actually, I think this one should be a shock. No, 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 no. You can either roughly or directly follow what I'm doing here. Um, it's entirely up to you. But I will say, very much so, shock beams are not as good as proton beams. You don't need to make that proton beam like I did, you can just make it like from here to here. Um, and it won't be too much of a difference. Uh, this wall here, try to make it uh, a little bit longer, because otherwise what might happen is that, this is what I've noticed happening, a, um, an archer will just start shooting the wall down. Or we'll, we'll shoot past the wall to the crystal, which you don't want happening. The reason uh, that shock beams are used, uh, at least on Redux, is because uh, they're a lot more powerful, first of all. But also another nice feature is that the one shot, the two shock beam plus uh, wall, physical beam um, mana count, mana mana cost, is the exact same as uh, what these chests give: 140 mana per go. So you end up with zero mana by the end of it all. But again, proton beams, we have a lot more mana to play around with. Doo -doo -doo. You can really make these beams super long. And then um, if you have the time left over... Wow, I lost all of my frames. Jesus. If you have the time left over, um, an enemy... Single player a lot less likely, but an enemy might come through here. So place down a physical beam here and a proton beam around like that. Uh, now you have a bunch of extra DU. I would recommend spending a bit of it right here. Not DU, uh, uh, mana. Spending a bit of it right there. And then the rest of the mana, um, you could just kind of walk around and see where it is necessary. The By it, I mean the beams. As you can see here, these uh, orcs are getting killed pretty easily here. Sometimes they'll get jumped up and they'll go on top of that stop sign, but that's pretty rare um, and tends to not be an issue. Uh, over here there's an archer who is being a dillweed pretty common. Um, you might want to place a shock beam, one of the a shock beam instead, uh, here or there but uh, it depends. Over here shock beam potentially um, frankly speaking, once you can Getting into shock beams is uh, pretty good just because it is much, much, much better um, because it'll one-shot the enemies. So once you have like, I don't know, way higher stats, you can just use shock beams instead of what I'm doing. My frames, my frames. I lose literally half of my frames when I walk over here. I apologize, I probably just blasted uh, the, your guys' ears out. But as the first wave complete, 
That is 2 million XP. Um, your alternate characters can actually get more than 2 million, like 2.4 million. But uh, that's for them. I'm going to put a few points into beam HP and the rest of it into the DPS stats. Now we're level 60 something. Um, we, can we can equip this now. I think this is better. I think this is... Uh, I'm going to hold off on it. So now you can go around and loot these chests. Um, I would recommend looting these chests once as every type of character. Eevee is two types of characters, uh, Huntress and Apprentice, so she will get both of their weapons. Um, get yourself a... Get yourself a an Eevee... Uh, no, wait. Get yourself a Huntress weapon slash Apprentice weapons, two of them that have really good tower stats for your Eevee. Uh, pick up any armor you get, literally any mythical armor you get, pick it up. Uh, and then that's for your uh, EV. Then for your Huntress, uh, no, no, your Apprentice takes priority, but also for Huntress, get yourself a nice Huntress and Apprentice weapon. Then move on to Monk. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, that's really bad. So we're just going to let that sell. Yes. Yeah, okay, we're going to let that sell. I was thinking about using it as a weapon, but I don't think it's going to be useful for that. Um, armor, don't even look at it. If it's mythical, take it. Uh, once you've gotten all of your weapons for all your characters, like right now we have one good weapon for our uh, EV. Looks like we have two good weapons, and this is a good weapon for an apprentice. Apprentice doesn't care that much about HP. Um, and now this is a, it's an okay weapon for Huntress. Huntress doesn't matter that much, in my opinion. So, like this, Huntress stat requirements are much lower, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, now we could probably start, stop playing on EV. There we go. Huntress has a weapon. Uh, and now we'll be running around on not not the Huntress, not the EV, not the Apprentice, but instead the uh, Monk. Yeah, we'll be running around on a Monk. Um, let's see. Press G and restart. I don't think... Now you can bring in your alts. Your alts? Yes, your alternate characters. Um, I don't think the amount... Uh, the amount of HP that enemies have increases by a lot when you go through this uh, with multiple characters, um, at least for the first wave. But the count, the amount of enemies that you have total, definitely does increase by a fair amount. Um, some areas to keep in mind uh, for, I guess, now. Um, this area up here, you don't really have to care about it at all. I've never seen this area have too many issues. So you can kind of ignore this upper area. No need to put anything extra up here. But for the other areas, uh, like up there specifically, um, take a bit more care, uh, I would argue. Uh, right, we're going this way. I have a specific path that I like to go through here with. Um, and in recognition of the fact that we have a bunch of extra mana, I'm going to quickly put a physical beam here along with a proton beam like this because I know 100% um, we're doing this with four players. It is extremely likely that an enemy does walk through there. Long ass proton beam. Um, now we have enough damage. We went from 8,000 to 12,000. That's like a 1.5 times increase. Uh, we have enough damage to not have to deal with any enemies uh, being jerks and like jumping over our walls or anything like that. I think at least. Um, up here, you might have a, uh, what was it, mage? You might have a mage just be a complete dillweed and spawn skeletons and stuff, so you'll have to watch out for that. But the higher stats you get, basically the sooner you can use shock beams fully, like once your shock beams deal, I want to say 40,000 damage, 45,000 damage, um, the sooner you can ignore, uh, the sooner you can relax, I guess. To do. Uh, I should bring in our other characters soon, yes. So Dungeon Defenders 1 has an emulator. Um, Live has an emulator, which it used to not have. Very nice. It's the same one as Feridex, and it's a really, really good emulator. Um, I will use it in a moment once I am finished building everything. Please let me build. Please let me build. Uh, if you have higher cast rate, very nice. I do not. I built this really far back. I should not have built it like that. Oh, well. Uh, if you're wondering, oh, I, sh I should have explained this. If you're wondering how I start the waves um, without going to the crystal and all that, if this is like your first time through, um, I have, I can press G 
Uh, you can all you also can do this. You can press G, and that will start the wave for you, um, without you having to do anything. Um, Control G will start the wave like automatically, no matter what, if you're the host. So even if other people aren't ready, if you press Control G as the host, it will ready up uh, the map and it will begin. So once I bring in my alternate characters, I'm going to be pressing Control G rather than just G. I don't think that's something that I sh that that should matter for most of you people. For most of you people, that's badly worded for most of you guys. But um, for people who don't know, now you know. Okay. Uh, for your alternate characters that you bring in, I'm gonna bring in uh, primarily this character, and then this character, and then uh, probably this character. Doesn't really matter that much. Um, we have a lot of extra mana. I don't know what to spend it on. Uh, for the starting wave, go on with whichever character you care about the most and quickly run around like I am here and hit an enemy. Just hit an enemy at least once and then quickly jump back to this area because the spider is going to spawn on the right side here, if I remember correctly. Press F8 to hide your characters, not F9. Uh, I will place down another shock beam here. Okay, um, I think, yeah, that mage over there is going to go down to the down path over here. Complete Dillweed. Uh, looks like everything else is doing perfectly fine. Uh, this wall down here, I don't think it'll go down. Yeah, we placed our proton beam properly. So that's eventually going to take down that um, mage. There we go. So that's pretty much all the problems dealt with. Uh, maybe you should have placed down an extra beam up here, now that I think about it, to deal with that um, archer. But I don't think it's a problem. And this ogre, ogre? No. This big boy is uh, not running towards the beam as he should be. Uh, two areas are having issues with archers. Love to see it. So the reason that we hit an enemy um, very early on in that last wave was because if you hit an enemy, you get a 1.3 times XP bonus for only weapons used. This only works if you aren't a builder. Um, so if you built something and you hit an enemy, it doesn't matter. But you will notice that the top right character is getting a whole lot more XP. Holy hell, that is a lot more XP. Um, and since there's extra characters, I think because of that, your main uh, primary character gets even more XP. But yeah, so now we're going to be running around on our EV, not on our EV, on our, um, what was that other character? Uh, monk? Yes. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to put all of his points into hero speed and then like, whatever else afterwards, because I just want to be able to get these chests and get him a weapon very quickly. Um, after this, after this, yes, after uh, getting the monk a weapon, I will go on to the, probably the squire, yeah. You don't really have to worry about the jester. The jester can get any kind of weapon reward, so he's kind of like a secondary thought. That sucks, it has negative HP. Big L. One difference from Redux uh, and Live is uh, going to be the mana gathering tools. Uh, that's good. I'd rather get a quad stat, so I'm going to keep running around on my monk. But um, the the mana gathering weapons, right? Mana gathering weapon on Redux was just genius scimitar. Didn't really matter how good or bad it was, but uh, it was by far and wide the best weapon for that purpose. Um, live, I think it's the chicken baller. We're going to be balling, basically. Uh, that weapon is very good for gathering mana. Nowhere near as good as the scimitar, mind you. But it's still perfectly fine. Uh, there we go. That's a good weapon for our monk. So now we'll be running around on the summoner. Yes. So I'll be running around on the summoner a little bit. Uh, to a little message to IDHC. Um, I beg of you, my friend. Allow me change fix the bug where the game currently starts with exactly graphics quality ultra and has these settings like set automatically. I have tried changing it in the startup settings, did not work. I have realized something. Hold on, fellas. I should have said this before. I might have I'll I'll put like a little edit thing here. Uh you guys you guys had like a bit of a cut. That was probably pretty weird. Or maybe you didn't have a cut. No, you, you guys had a bit of a cut. Probably pretty weird. Um, but I have just picked up the pyro from the from the tavern. Uh, I should have done that way earlier. The moment you get level 25, you should do that.
Okay, uh, let's get back into it. Tinker's Lab, Nightmare Hardcore. I'm going to do this until we get at least our EV to 74. Um, I might just get all of our characters to 74, to be honest. Let's see what the shock damage is. Uh, 24,000. Nope. Okay, as I was saying, stupid man down here goes through this side, and uh, this can happen with whatever enemy. It can be a goblin, it can be an orc, it can be, I don't know, your mother. It doesn't matter, but one of them uh, has a pretty high chance of going through there. If you are more confident than I am, one thing that you can do, uh, if you want, is uh, after dealing a bit of DPS on your, you know, main character you want to level, in, the, in my case, my monk, um, you can actually run around and quickly deal a bit of DPS on your uh, other characters, just a little bit. Uh, as long as they don't get hit or anything, uh, they should get the bonus. Although, from my testing, uh, it has not worked out that way, so, eh, maybe... I don't know. Um, mess around and find out, I suppose. My, uh, I think everybody's probably going to have a pretty different experience there, but um, if you're not killing an enemy, it'll be a bit of a 50-50, I think. Also, the reason we're on our summoner is because uh, we are getting ourselves a uh, summoner... What was it? We're either getting the summoner uh, items only, which is just armor. So we're only getting armor rewards from this.
That's very strange. So for some reason, the big XP bonus that we're supposed to get on all the characters that did only damage only got applied to two of them. And one of them, it only, like, you know, it, uh, half applied. I just realized we have a bunch of characters up. I should remove those. I would recommend bringing your summoner out here once to just level them quickly. Uh, I didn't because I'm stupid. We were supposed to get to level 74, uh, but we didn't because our crystal got hit in the top left area over there. Uh, I didn't build one of the beams, one of the proton beams was not built close enough to the wall, so an archer just started smooching that wall, giving it a bunch of kisses, and then it, uh, one of the arrows happened to fly by the wall and hit the crystal instead. That already was targeting the crystal the whole time, I honestly couldn't tell you. Either way, that sucks. But uh, regardless, we're still going to get to 74 in just a little bit. I have figured something out. Thank you to the cars outside for being loud, as always. I figured something out. So, our other characters don't get a lot of mana, or ex extra XP, um, if they don't hit anything, right? Because they're not missing that 1.3 times bonus. So what I realized, I think, um, is that the first character, say our monk, right? He's a monk class uh, character. He hits an enemy and he gets that bonus, and then he gets a whole bunch of XP. Like, he would get 3 million on average. Our adept, if the adept also leaves, like, the starting area and hits an enemy, the adept would also get, like, the, you know, the big XP bonus, right? But then our initiate, who is also a monk class character, right, um, she wouldn't get the huge XP bonus that the monk did. She would get an XP bonus, yeah, but it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be. It wasn't as uh, powerful as the monk was. So I think it's for each type of class, whichever enemy, uh, whichever class uh, hits first is going to be the one that gets like the big boy XP bonus um, for each type of class, I think. Uh, either way, our EV is only a little bit off of 74. Our apprentice is probably two more attempts off of 74, if I had to bet. Um, our initiate is three more and our monk is already there 
So it looks like we don't have to do anything more on, on, more on our monk. We can bring in our uh, summoner. Thankfully, summoner does not care about anything. He's just going to be chilling in the back. He can't deal damage unless he has a pet. And I am far too lazy to equip a pet on him. Because that would require getting him to level like 25. So he can use the uh, heavy or pyro pet. Probably the heavy pet. And then having him move around a little bit. Uh, instead, I'm just going to have like the initiate out this time. Uh, along with the adept. And then just have them move around. In case you're wondering. No, you do not need to have like a very high um, cast rate and or movement speed stat. You don't need those to be super high to be able to like finish the whole build. Uh, I know that you can do like a pretty bare minimum shock beam build. Um, well, using proton beams instead for live. Uh, but you can do that build with zero in both stats. It'll just be a little tight and you'll have to be like very efficient with your movement. So... In that case, you might want to put a few stat points into, like, you know, uh, resistances. Not resistances, into uh, cast speed and all that. Oh, something's getting hit. Same crystal? Same crystal. I'm going to ignore that. Because I, I would rather get the XP bonus on our uh, adept here. The same thing has happened again. Um, where an archer is just being a complete dillweed over here. Why are you guys up here? Uh, I'm going to need to run back. Hold on. First time I'm getting this issue. What are they doing? How's about you don't stand up there, chief? I don't know why, but those orcs decided to leave me alone. So I think that maybe it's the wall is not far enough down or something like that. I don't know. Honestly speaking, I don't know what could be causing that issue. Please die. Good lord, my ears. Maybe the wall over here was not like all the way forward that it could have been. I don't know. Interesting how these problems arise now and they haven't arise before. Arise? Arose? Risen? Yes. How's about you die? I apologize. I'm blasting your guys' ears once again. I am once again annihilating your ears. There we go. So, Adept, our, um, our initiate didn't get 74. None of our characters except our primary one got 74, actually. But, that does mean that we hit 74 on our EV, which is pretty big. Also, can finally move around fast on our uh, summoner. I think I'll probably end the episode off here-ish. Uh, I'm going to look through the loot, the uh, mythicals that we've gotten, and quickly like sort through them. Uh, not not exactly sort through them, but I will be just equipping a bunch of stuff on our um, initiate. No, on our EV, so that you, know, you guys can see the big uh, stat increase. But after that... Um, I don't know, maybe I'll uh, level some other characters. Mm. If I level other characters, if I do any kind of progress, I'll, I'll keep it all on screen, as much of it as I uh, can. Like the picking up of the items and uh, leveling up of the characters, stuff like that. Wow, we are getting unlucky. That is two chests in a row without loot. Not the worst luck I've seen. I've literally hit six chests in a row here without getting any loot. Uh, I think I might have done that in the last, um, in the Quest for Completion Extras episode. But very quickly, go on to our EV and equip the new weapons. Chain boots. Chain boots kind of suck as well. Wow. A lot of garbage. Even still, this is our new stats, like quad 400s. Um, with this, if we want to do a few things we can do. One of them, we can do moon base on hard. That's what I plan on doing after this. And the other thing that we can do 
is uh, we can go ahead and do Ember Mount, Nightmare Hardcore, First Wave. Uh, where is it? Ember Mount Volcano, Nightmare Hardcore, First Wave, and get like 10 million XP from that every time we do it. While we are much faster. And just for context, the new DPS is basically double what the old one was. I think even our shock beams should be pretty solid now. Yeah, 40,000 DPS, 40,000 damage. And that's without any super proper gear on. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, oh, maybe, no, wait, no. I'm going to take a pause, uh, and then I will have like a little montage of picking up items and leveling up characters. Captured some tech. Oh, uh, I got greedy. Just die. What is wrong with you? My XP. No. Give me XP back, what the hell?
That's uh, that's it. That's all the the items. Oh wait, I got a godly. I didn't even notice. That is all the item gathering for the moment. Item gathering, leveling, also item gathering. I'm gonna respec all of the heroes shown here at a uh, later date. Maybe not today. Hold on. So it looks like every type of weapon has like only used weapon bonus thing. I don't know how to describe it, but basically whenever my EVs pet uh, hit an enemy, whenever the pyro on my EV hit an enemy, my uh, summoner seemed to not get any like, you know, massive bonus for XP. So I'm just going to assume that every individual type of damage that you can deal uh, is like once per uh, thing, I guess. And whoever gets it, uh, gets it. Alright, this character does not have anything. Boom. We are 74 and everything. So now I'm going to uh, sift through the, the items and uh, make sets for characters and equip the sets for those characters. Very fun. And I'm going to do it in a separate recording because this one is getting to be really long. Ladies and gentlemen, it is done. It took literally two hours, but I have finally sorted through all the garbage. Um, I did keep some pieces here and there, but for the most part, I have sold everything that is worthless, and we have a bunch of mana. Uh, I'm going to cut the part where I sort through everything, because good lord, it took forever, and it was boring. But... I'll show you the characters. So this is the Apprentice. We gave her the staff that we had from before. Apprentice's main um, care is damage. You just want a shit ton of damage on your Apprentice. Uh, attack rate is the second biggest thing. And then after that is range. And then least, definitely least, is uh, HP. I should explain, by the way, before I continue. Everything except for our um, these two characters over here, uh, everybody else just only cares about their tower stats, nothing else, really. Okay, so that's the apprentice, and that's what she cares about. Next is the EV. EV um, largely stays the same as from before. You don't really care about range, and you care most about damage. Then I think pretty equally about HP and uh, recharge rate, or uh, attack rate. Pretty equally. It's kind of iffy, but main thing is damage. It's fine at the moment if you're, like, kind of equal. Um, and as far as range goes... Don't have zero range, but like this stat will cap off. Not really cap off, but it'll stop uh, being useful after like 1k, 1.5k. Um, which is to say that when you have like 8k in your main stat, this will be stuck at like 1 to 2k and you won't ever care about it because it won't make any difference. So yeah, uh, primarily damage, then after that, uh, rate and uh, HP are equal on EV. Next is our summoner. For our summoner, um, main thing is HP, so you want to have a lot of HP on the summoner. After that, uh, rate will cap out, at th I think, at like 1 to 2k, maybe a little bit higher. And then it's range and damage. Um, I think probably more damage than range, but it's pretty interchangeable. You're not really using your apprentice, or no, not your apprentice, you're not really using your summoner to deal with like crazy DPS. You're mainly using your summoner to just body block uh, enemies, so you don't you have like extra DU to spend, and to weaken enemies with spider minions. Uh, that is the summoner. Um, I have done nothing on this character because I don't know what to do yet with it. Um, for our initiate uh, slash monk, these are the stats. Um, the HP is really low on here, which I don't like. But um, main thing is the range. You want to have a lot of range. After that is the damage. Uh, I think. Yeah, either damage 
and HP. The, these two are pretty equal, but um, I think more damage than HP by a little bit. Uh, and then uh, rate. Your rate is like the least important one. But like, you know, same thing as before. Like once you have 8k in your main stat, your, rain, your rate will probably be like 2k maybe. It's 3k-ish. Um, exact same thing for your Huntress. Although I think the damage is actually uh, even less important than before. Um, so definitely range, HP, and then uh, damage and rate. Rate still being the lowest of importance, but um, I think a little, a little more important, arguably, than your um, your uh, initiate or monk. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and last thing that I did was this character here. Uh, now, no weapon on this one yet, but uh, big DPS character right here. The resistances will need to work with that, but um, this is what she's wearing, and it's basically just any armor that's gonna be pretty useful for ability one, ability two. Uh, this character in the later on game will just be used for like general DPS dealing, like not super crazy DPS, but you know, whatever works to kind of DPS and uh, mainly to upgrade towers. So casting rate is eventually gonna be the most important thing. But for now, I'm keeping it as a DPS character. I think with this monk over here, um, this will probably be the super big DPS dealer later on. Um, but it'll be like a super mix of everything, a tower booster, and um, at some point like a DPS dealer where it focuses on ability too. But uh, that's that's pretty much it. I keep hitting my mic, I apologize about that. So yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for the first episode. Um, I have one thing planned for the next episode, and that is I want to go into Moonbase and do it on hard hardcore because it's not that difficult you can pretty easily do it with 500 in your stats and uh, mainly doing moon base gets you the uh, fish in a bowl yes fish in a bowl pet which can cap out at like 500 in all of the stats and pretty commonly reaches around the 500 uh, stat threshold yes Re pretty commonly rolls with 500 in its uh, stats so that's to say, all of our characters, um, especially the summoner actually, but all of our characters are going to be a, getting a pretty nice uh, and noticeable increase in all of their stats um, because we're going to do moon base on hard like four, yeah, just about four times I think should be enough. Um, just however many times is enough to get a bunch of pets. But yeah, that's, that's it for this episode. That's the starting plan for the next episode. Um, we might get into Dread Dungeon a little bit in the next episode, or might even mess around on Tinkers. I'm not Tinkers, uh, Lab Assault. I'm not 100% sure if you guys have any uh, any ideas. Put them in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.